Alright guys, so welcome back to part 4 of our Construct series. Now for those of you that haven't seen video 1, 2 and 3, make sure you hit those links down below in the subscription, as well as it'll be attached to this video at the end. Familiarize yourself there first before you sort of progress here, it'll just give you a better understanding of what it is we're doing. So today, wasting no time, we're going to be jumping straight back into the enemy movement in terms of what else is available in terms of behaviors and just creating something different other than the line of sight as we did in the previous video. So today we're going to be adding another enemy to this game, just giving you guys a broader spectrum of what it is you can do in your little top downs as well as in any type of game. Uh, pathfinding, which is the behavior we're going to look at today, is excessively widely used in, in tower defenses, you name it. So it's pretty cool behavior and it allows you just to set sort of uh, the enemy to do certain things and to follow along that path. So firstly, what we're going to do, wasting no time, let's jump in and let's add a new object. And I'm going to go ahead and add a sprite as always. And this is going to be our new character. We're going to give him a little paint job because he deserves it. And let's add some little eyes here for the guy while we add it. And Photoshop 101. Thank me later. There we go. New little guy. And I'm going to just set it to 32 by 32 here on the property side. 32 by 32. And there he is. Fantastic. I'm going to move this little guy up. And we will have this little guy over here. All right. Awesome. So what we need to do now is add the behavior pathfinding. So we're going to go add new and we're going to type in path and there we're going to see pathfinding. Really it's self-explanatory, isn't it? Path, you will walk along a path that we're going to set for it. Right, so there we've got our little pathfinding. We've got the cell size. I'm going to set that to 32 only because the cell size here is 32. And we're going to allow him to do diagonal so he can turn and we're going to set his speed. Let's set his speed to 80 so that he doesn't rush all the way there. Then what I want to do is I want to set a end path. Now, what the end path is, is basically I want this little guy to end somewhere. Uh, if, for argument's sake, I'm not seen by him. So that's what we're going to do in this tutorial. So let's go and add a new object as well. And let's put a sprite. And let's put it right here. Let's just paint that as well. Okay, but I need to give that eyes. Okay, I'm going to hit that by 32 by 32. Just to give you guys an idea. 32 by 32, there we go. Okay, and then what we're going to do here is we're going to call this, let's call this path underscore end. Okay. And then over here, let's call this enemy 2. So, enemy 2. So we know that it's enemy 2. Then what I'm going to do down below on the property side, you will see there it says initially visible. I want you to remove that. So that's going to be invisible. So if we go ahead and play that, you'll see that the blue block is not there. Okay. And if we go here, obviously this little guy is going to see us as we did in the last tutorial. All right. Fantastic. Now what we're going to do is jump over onto our event sheet, the good old magic sheet. So we're going to be adding a new event. And I think the first one we need to do is basically set the path. In other words, we need to tell the character, enemy 2, where to go. So we're going to use system on start of layout. So when the layout starts, assuming this character goes through a door or starts a new stage, we need to tell the enemies where they need to sort of end or, you know, go there and then go back again to the other position. You can set multiple positions, but let's go and set one for now. So let's go and do a layout. So let's do on start of layout. I want to add an action and I want to say enemy 2 and then you're going to see obviously now that we've added the pathfinding behavior remember the properties on the layout sheet you'll see that this is now available so let's go and say we are going to probably find a path because that's really what we need this guy to do so on start of layout find a path and then it's going to give you coordinates now this can be coordinates on the layout itself if there's a certain position you want it to go a certain object but in my case, I want him to go to that invisible block that we set, which is called the path in. I want him to end there. So I'm going to use that X and Y coordinates. So I'm going to go path in, and I can tab, and it'll just bring it up for me. And I'm going to go X, and then I'm going to tab again, go down, and I'm going to go path, tab again, dot Y, and that is where I want him to go. I'm going to click done. So enemy 2, find path to that. Now, essentially, nothing's going to happen. But what is going to happen in the debug is this guy has now found this hidden block that we've set here. So he's found it, but now we need to instruct him to do something about it. So we're going to go ahead and add another event. And we're going to go enemy 2. And we're going to say on path found. So let's look at that. Is moving along the path. Is calculating on path found. So on path found, because he's found it here, assuming he has, we are going to then tell the enemy to move along that path. So let's go here. 
and we're going to say move along the path. Effectively, now if I run it, he should go to that, rotate himself, and then go. Let's have a look. There he's rotating, and off he goes, and he should stop right over here. Okay, fantastic. So that is essentially the, the basics with regards to walking along the path that we set for him. Now, we can set that he must sort of avoid solid objects. That is already by default enabled, but we can code that in as well. So what we can do is we can even go one step further. We can essentially, let's do that. Let's go and add a line of sight for him. So we're going to say, let's add an instant variable. Now, this is where families come into. I want to get shared something else here before I jump across. And I wanted to do families in a separate tutorial, which I think we'll do. Now you're going to notice that I'm going to add the another um, behavior. Let's go and add the line of sight behavior. But I don't quite like doing it this way. So I'm going to just quickly show you the one approach and then I'm going to do in a separate tutorial a better approach. So it's going to add the line of sight. And we've got use collision, that's fine. Solids, give them the range of a thousand, that's fine. Okay, now effectively what we want to do is we're going to stop this path. We're basically going to use this little, this event here, this condition. We're going to basically go enemy two, right? He has line of sight, has line of sight to an object, which is going to be our player. Okay, done, is our condition. We then want him to stop basically finding the path. So we want him to stop on the path first. Let's just do that. And then we're gonna set him to move towards the player. So let's say assuming he's just walking along the corridors and in the tunnels. The minute he spots you, we want him to run. Remember our enemy one, he's standing still. So if we run that there, you'll see he's standing still. This guy's on a mission, he's, he's patrolling. Let's call it the patrolling. But we want him to come and attack us the minute he finds us. So this is the reasoning for this condition. So we go, he has line of sight. We're gonna go enemy two, and we can say move towards. But before we do that, we want to set the path because we want to remove him from obviously walking along. So let's go set this to disabled because we want to stop pathway. So let's have a look and make sure that when he finds us, he stops on the path. Let's just ensure that that is because I'm disabling this function. Oh, you see, because he sees me obviously now. So now he stops and then we can go ahead and say, Enemy two, move to the behavior, which I think we still need to add as well. So we've got line of sight, but we need to add one more. And let's go back to our enemy here, add another behavior. And let's add new and let's use the move to. So I'm going to just search that. And there's the move to. Fantastic. Let's just ensure that these properties are correct. So we've got behaviors, line of sight, move to, max speed. Let's set that to 80 as well, because that's the speed he's traveling in, which he's traveling. Right, stop on solids. We can leave that for now. We can go ahead here then and basically replicate what we've done here. So we can go move to, enemy to, move to, move to an object, which is going to be player, direct and done. So essentially now he should move to us. Let's see what happens when he sees me. Oh, here he comes, he comes past. Now you notice that he's lapsed over the solid only because you'll notice that he's in check. So now they're all coming after me. Right, fantastic. So yeah, we can basically once again set, you know, the does not have line of sight. So let's go ahead and say enemy two, which I think I'm just going to copy this, making it a lot easier for us. Paste, I'm going to invert this, right click, click invert. Now we're saying enemy two does not have a line of sight of me. And we can go ahead and just obviously remove the... Um, does not have line of sight, we're going to remove that one. And we're going to say, let's just also delete this while we are, just to make more sense. We're going to go ahead and say enemy two, and we're going to stop the move to movement, which is down here. And we're going to say, that's the pathfinding, move to properties, stop. Right, so now basically what we have is when we run this again, he's going to move along the path. When he sees me, he's going to chase me down. Right, there he is. But when he doesn't see me, he's going to stop. And there you'll see he stops. He sees me, chases me down, doesn't see me, he stops. So that's perfect. Now we could add an additional event to this. We could go, okay, now that you don't see me, go back to patrol work. So let's go ahead and do that quickly. So in this case, what we do is add another event. And we just basically enable, just to show you quick. Yeah, we've disabled the pathfinding. Let's go back and enable it. Because he still knows where the path is. So let's go enemy 2. And we're just going to enable set properties. Sorry, that's the move to. This is why the, using the search helps. 
and this goes set the enabled to enabled and done. So there we've got the pathfinding, enable it. When he does not have line of sight of me, he mustn't move to me. Go ahead and continue the path. Let's go and test that theory. So here I am, he's doing the path, he doesn't see me. He sees me, he's chasing me down. If I go back, here he's going back to the path and he's gonna continue patrol work. Right, fantastic. Now there is, another, there is another condition that we can do that once he's reached the path end, we can then tell him to go somewhere else. This, uh, the only reason why he's going over this is because we haven't set that he must stop at solids here on the left-hand side. If we set that to stop at solids, means he won't go over that, okay? Right guys, so that is for this tutorial. We're gonna look at a little bit more advanced in terms of the patrolling, the pathfinding, and the different types of movement behaviors. It's critical to ensure that the different enemies that we add to different levels, that each one does vastly something different and it needs to be well thought out process. This is where, as I explained in video one, where logistics comes into things. So we wanna make sure that we give all our enemies and different types of characters when we, when we are later on we get to the design work, that they've got awesome types of movability, giving the game a lot more depth to than just a normal platform where it's left or right or or you know stand still sees you follows you this is a great way of creating smart ai for certain enemies and we're going to be deep diving that uh, over the course of the series well guys that's it for me i hope you enjoyed the video stay tuned the next one is coming up soon as well as don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below as well as that notification bell, and uh, be ensured that you get the latest and the greatest i'll catch you guys in the next one